So this is a slide. Uh, we are the Native Fish Coalition and uh, a conservation organization in Vermont. And we've been in existence for uh, five years. And this is a presentation regarding brook trout. And um, it looks like it's going by itself automatically. Um, so I'm going to try to keep up with the, uh, whatever the setting is right now. Um, and we are a 501c nonprofit organization. And we do work in for uh, for brook trout protection, restoration, and recovery in lakes and ponds. And uh, this is important term terminology. Wild is self-sustaining or born in nature. Native is indigenous and in, in historical present um, in, in, in a body of water. And uh, so this is about biology, history, fishing, and conservation of brook trout. So the brook trout was originally um, referred to as Salmo fontanalis, and uh, uh, currently they referred to as Salvinus uh, fontanalis, and Salvinus uh, is the genus of char. And, and uh, these are two different pictures of the same species of brook trout. Unlike many other salmonids, brook trout uh, have very few subspecies. The, uh, the extinct uh, silver trout, um, SF agassi C, and, and the SF timagami C. And uh, this, these are two subspecies of brook trout that are extinct, the silver trout and the aurora trout. Um, some, sea, some are sea run and some are coastal brook trout. And um, once thought to be a subspecies, they are now considered the same species as other brook trout. And you've got a sea run brook trout and a coastal. The sea run goes out to sea. The coastal lives in, stays in uh, streams along the coast, but they don't go out to coast for uh, their adult life. The sea run come back to rivers to spawn, and they go back out to sea. Um, genetically, they're the same, but brook trout, sea run, and coastal brook trout, um, they live a unique life um, history. Um, biologists recognize the two distinct strains, a brook trout, northern and southern, with the line of the, uh, at the New River Watershed, which is in southwestern Virginia. It said that the northern strain um, is more resilient. Um, the, the name brook trout is misleading. They're not true trout, they're char. Brook trout are more closely related to Arctic char. Bull trout, doll, levarden, and other lake trout. And there's um, other chars. Uh, the Arctic char, you got a bull trout, you got doll, levarden, and you've got lake trout. Lake trout are native to Vermont. Um, the other two, the other three, chars are not, there possibly was Arctic char in northern Vermont at one time. Um, brook trout are however the most trout-like and out of all the char occupying similar habitat, very similar to the bat and kill, and uh, trout while other stunning um, small trout, brook trout rarely live more than a few years. In large lakes and rivers they can live up to 10 years, in smaller ponds they fall somewhere in between. Lifespan is Inf influenced by the factors such as water temperature, forage availability, angling pressure, harvest, and possibly gen genetics. Uh, the oldest brook trout on record was a stockfish from the High, Severa, High Sierras of California, which has to be 24 years old. Extreme conditions severely s slowed its metabolism. A brook trout can reach sexual maturity as early as two years, and some say earlier. They do not die after spawning and, and continue to spawn throughout their 
lives. Hybrid cut are fall spawners. Spawning occurs from September to November, depending on location. While most brook trout spawn in lakes, uh, spawn in moving water, some spawn in lakes and ponds, usually near the shore. While usually the result of introducing one or both species, brook trout can be hybridized with other char and trout species that occur naturally in some places can, can respond differently when one or both is introduced. There have been reports of naturally reproducing brook trout and lake, brook and lake trout hybrids called black in Canada and a 13 pound species was taken in 1993 across between a female brook trout and a male lake trout. Introduced brook trout are known to hybridize with native bull trout in the Columbia River Basin. Uh, brook trout, brown trout hybrids are called tiger trout while primarily a hatchery hybrid evidence of what appears to be naturally occurring tiger trout is increasing. Uh, brook trout and arctic char, arctic char crosses are referred to as Spartic char, six fish from the Fraser River watershed in northern Labrador in the mid 1980s were identified as hybrids. Now we're going to talk about native range. Uh, brook trout are one of the most widely distributed native trout or char in North America. Only lake trout and Arctic char have a larger native range. Uh, brook trout are native to eight Canadian provinces, Labrador, New, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, Ontario, Prince Edward Island, Quebec, and Eastern Manitoba, as well as the United States. Uh, brook trout are also one of the most widely distributed native trout in the contiguous United States. Uh, brook trout are native to Connecticut, Georgia, Iowa, Kentucky, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. And this is their uh, native range in yellow. And types of brook trout water. While best known as small stream fish, brook trout are also found in rivers, ponds, lake, lakes, tailwaters, spring creeks, tidal rivers, and estuaries. And there's some streams. Beaver ponds. And rivers, ponds, lakes, tide water, feeding habitat. Because brook trout are opportunistic feeders, this is because they are often found in relatively infertile environments such as freestone streams and algotropic lakes. And they, there's some midges, mayflies, caddis, damselflies, dragonflies, ants, beetles, leeches, minnows, mice. Official recognition. Book chart out of the state freshwater or cold water fish in nine states, Michigan, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Vermont, and West Virginia. And some states, the states that they're native in, or the state fish in. Um, brook trout, um, and this is a wood replica of a Daniel Webster fabled 14.5 pound brook trout from the 1820s, and a world record brook trout caught um, in 1915, another world record brook trout caught in Ontario, a little bigger than the ones in Vermont. And that's Bob Mallard with a brook trout probably caught in Maine.
That's Emily Bash, and she's the vice chair of NFC. Bob Mallard is the, is the national chair of uh, NFC. <clears throat> Status and threats. Brook trout populations have re been reduced by as much as 50% in the United States. Uh, the threats to brook trout are numerous and ever changing. They change, they change depending on where you are and what is the threat in that area. And these are some of the threats. Um, So you've got road crossings and you've got logging and um, and this is a sign um, up in Maine not to, is, no, asking people not to stock any um, non-native fish in um, brook trout habitat. Uh, yeah, this is a picture of uh, 40 brook trout uh, seeking refuge in a spring. Um, and this is the effect of climate change. You know, this, um, the, the stream they're in is, has heated up too hot and they're seeking a very cold uh, spring area of the, of the brook conservation. Uh, population studies, uh, um, chemical reclamation, improved road crossings, dam removal, adding structure and chop and drop have improved the uh, habitat for brook trout and many streams, limiting harvesting and reducing incidental mortality. And these are some of the organizations that, that Native Fish Coalition have worked with on conservation projects. what Native Fish Coalition has done. So Native Fish Coalition has worked to brand the term native while emphasizing brook trout as the east, east most visible native salmonid. Um, NFC has written numerous articles in, about wild native brook trout at the local, state, regional, and national, uh, national publications. <clears throat> And NFC has delivered a series of presentations about brook trout shown at the at fly fishing and sporting shows, TU chapters, fishing clubs, and rod and gun club shows, meetings. L.L. Bean had a lecture series. Um, NFC Executive Director Bob Maller recently released a comprehensive book on brook trout and uh, we actually have that at the uh, at our table for sale. Um, NFC has written to state agencies challenging proposed regulations and law changes, land management proposals, and other issues that impact wild native brook trout. NFC opposed the removal of two waters from Maine state heritage fish list. This included submitting le letters speaking at public hearings in both cases the proposals were removed from consideration. And if he's trying to address New Hampshire's faltering wild trout management program, six, just 16 waters, how much? All right, thank you. 16 waters submitted. Um, not a, NFC wants to address Vermont's highest in the east. This is, this is old news. We have actually succeeded. 
up till last year it was 12 fish uh, creel limit. This year we uh, it took us four years and we finally got it down to a 12 fish creel limit for brook trout in Vermont. Vermont is still um, the, the, the average uh, is six fish creel limit compared to other states that have native brook trout. <clears throat> Um, NF NFC work with Maine uh, Department of M Marine Resources to revise the regulations document to include sea run brook trout. And NFC has worked with Maine Department of Marine Resources to add sea run brook trout fact sheet to the species information webpage. NFC worked in partnership with Sportsmen's Alliance of Maine and Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife to create an informational sign pertaining to the state's main state heritage fish waters. And some, here are some of the signs that were posted up in Maine. And these are signs, we have, I have some of these signs um, at our table today. NSC partnered with Down East Salmon Federation and Sea Run Brook Trout Coalition to develop an informational sign petitioning pertaining to Sea Run Brook Trout in the Down East Maine region. These signs notify anglers and others of the presence of form of brook trout. NFC worked with Maine Department of Marine Resources and Sea Run Brook Trout Coalition to develop an informational sign for salters in Midcoast and Southern Maine. NFC has worked with Maryland Department of Natural Fish, Natural Resources develop an informational sign regarding their extensive wild native brook trout catch and release waters. The initial order was for 225 signs, 200 signs have already been installed. Pennsylvania NFC has worked with the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources to develop wild native brook trout informational signs for public lands. And NFC worked with Vermont Fish and Wildlife, Vermont Fish, Vermont Forest Parks and Recreation and U.S. Fish and Wildlife, U.S. Forestry Service to develop a series of informational signs regarding and prohibiting the use of live bait. Uh, NFC worked with Vermont Fish and Wildlife and U.S. Forestry Service in Connecticut River Valley TU to create informational sign note, noting the presence of native brook trout in the upper Deerfield River, River Warshed, which were just installed last week. Uh, NFC worked with the Narragansett Chapter of Trial Unlimited in Rhode Island to develop a series of informational signs for the Upper Wood River, considered for, by many the, to be the fi state's finest wild native brook trout water. Um, Massachusetts NFC worked with Ma Maine NFC worked with Rangeley Region Guides and Sporting Association, Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, and Down East Salmon Federation to develop a set of state of owned land denoting the new prohibition on the use of live bait, live fish as bait in the critical important north zone. One, one is for information, one is for information, kiosk and other is posting on trees. NSC has participated in fish population surveys involving sea run and stream resident brook trout providing manpower as well as logistic support and photography. NFC is working with Downey Salmon Federation, the Passamaquoddy Tribe at Sipiac, and the Maine Department of Maine Resources regarding a study to determine if sea run brook trout in the multi stream. And NFC is working to identify poorly de designed or compromised stream crossings, uh, negatively impacting wild fish, native fish. And here's some culvert examples. Um, and thanks.